Welcome to Trickle Down Geekonomics. Today on the table we have Secret Unknown Stuff, Escape from Dolce, a sentient cow games game. No. Good luck, you're gonna need it. So three escapees from the cryostasis chambers, Adam Starblaster, Snippy Von Bell, and Dr. Donna Haskin, are now trying to find their way out of the Dolce base. And they're starting from the bottom floor, working their way up. So our first escapee is Adam Starblaster, a super soldier hybridizing alien DNA, reptilian, and human DNA to make the ultimate killing machine. But mentally, he's got the mind of a 14-year-old boy, so good luck with that. Next, we've got Snippy Von Bell, a hybrid experimentation program by the British and American Armed Forces during World War II in an attempt to create a bovine superweapon to fight the Nazis. After 42 missions, successful missions, Snippy was returned to the United States and housed at Dolce Base. Next, we have Dr. Donna Haskins, a brilliant engineer and inventor who has worked for the various branches of the military and NASA. She graduated with honors from MIT at the age of 17, but she seems to be having reoccurring nightmares of being abducted by alien greys. So she's designed a lot of the tech that you see in Dolce Base, and she was actually uh, the inventor of a high-tech version of duct tape, bulletproof and steel nano-woven steel fibers. And then she was also hired to investigate mysterious power outages at various military bases including Dolce Base where she had an altercation between uh, some greys and security guards and uh, is now in custody. So all three of them have escaped from their cryostasis pods and they're trying to get out. Let's take a look at one of our character sheets, Dr. Donna Haskins. So we have her background information right here. On the top we have her health track. So here you can see the dark green shows her starting health at 7 and her max health at the currently. And we have the nice little green slider to go up and down there. On the right, we have her armor. She has none, so she's at zero. And then we have some special abilities that they have. And she has a, it's once per game level. Some are once per uh, encounter. She can flip over one of the objective tokens. So we just use one of these little room clear tokens. Um, if she used it, I, you'd leave it on the radiation side. And then once you use the ability, you could flip it over just to know you used it. Some, uh, again, some characters have once per encounter, so you'll be flipping it back and forth after each encounter. She also has a repair tech, which is kind of a, it's an always on ability. And uh, you can repair two armor for yourself or another player after every encounter. So that's a great ability because there are weapons that will chip away at your armor. And then at level five, when you go up high enough level, you'll get a, a lot of them will have a, a separate special ability that unlocks. So she has security hacking. The effectiveness of security badges is doubled. It cannot be used with the security expert ability. So she has, uh, it allows you to move the alert tracker back down the track. So another great ability. So below that, we have all our stats, our main stats for the game. So you have strength, which is how much you can carry. Mental, which is how good you find stuff and when you're making psi attacks. Accuracy, your ability to hit, whether it be melee or ranged, and then speed. And that's how many actions you have. As well as it's that number is added to your initiative roll. So real quick on these, if you see the little blank circles here, you can put, as you go up in various uh, experience and your abilities go up, you, you can use these little um, tokens as you go up to show you've gone up in that level. And then if it's a, that would be kind of a permanent experience boost. If for example, you have a weapon or piece of armor or something like that, that maybe gives you uh, plus one accuracy or an ability, you can use the red side just to show it's temporary. So if you lose the armor or whatever, it goes away. So there's that. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom part of the card now. So at the bottom of the card, we can show where we keep all our gear. So we have four slots here. We have our weapon slot, armor slot, ability slot, and then the backpack. So in each slot, you'll see the little icons representing what they can equip. 
So she can use a melee, a pistol, an alien weapon, or experimental. She can't use a rifle, for example, um, yet. There's also what kind of armor she can use, light, medium, or alien. There's also like heavy armor, which she wouldn't be able to use. And then abilities. These are abilities that she can um, take. So, for example, she can take weapon ability cards, tech cards, psi cards, or athletic cards. And then these are how, uh, like med kits, all, all other objects that don't fall within here are usually gray. And she can carry up to one because she has a strength of one. So here's real quickly, for example, she could put this weapon in there. It's got the pistol icon, so she could equip that. She could equip the cowboy, armored cowboy armor, because it's light armor, and she can equip that. And then here's an example of plus one accuracy with a pistol. So if she had that on, we'd put that there, which you can't see that, but we'd put the little red ability icon um, on the accuracy. And then here would be an ability. So here, this would give her, she doesn't have the ability to use rifle weapons, but with this, it's a weapon ability. She could put that in there. Now she can use rifle, plus she gets plus one accuracy and plus one damage. And then these gray ones, like um, we have here, uh, med kits, or let's see here. Got med kits, uh, grenade, and then this is like a special item. They all have different icons, but they're gray. And those kind of represent things that just kind of fall within the other. So you'd put those in your backpack. And again, you can only have up to whatever your um, uh, max strength is at the time. So she would only be able to have that one item in there. So at the bottom of the card, you can see here we have our level and experience track. And every time we take out an enemy or we complete an encounter, we're going to get experience. So as we get our experience, we're just moving up the track here. So one, two, three, four. So once we hit level two, which would be the first level, we would stop. We would increase our level here to level two. And then we would take this and reset it back to zero. And then as you can see, we have either a uh, increase in strength or we can go up a max two health. You don't get both, you choose which one you want. And then we would start over again. As we get experience, we go up, we'd skip level two and go to level three. And then you'd bump up to level three and here we can get an accuracy increase or we can get two more health. As our, now that would be our max health as well. Um, real quick, I'll just show you that. So we'll pop up here. So as far as max health goes, say we went up to health, you just take the little orange tracker Click it on to, let's say if we're at seven and we go up two, we'll be at nine now. So now we have a max health of nine and that, that would be our max health from that on. So if we healed to full health, we would go back to nine. So that's basically our characters and you'll see how they get manipulated and moved around during the game. We'll go ahead and start our first turn. Now, one thing too is the equipment that they have is based on um, playing the campaign. And in the book it gives uh, uh, basic starting equipment for the character. So this is just kind of a basic starting equipment. When you do the missions and things like that, based on the character you play, they'll give you uh, kind of a starting uh, equipment loadout. But this is what we have. And unfortunately, Snippy Von Bell cannot be equipped with anything because she does not have her harness. So, but she can kick and she's got a side blast attack that she can use too. So she's pretty tough. Okay, so we've got our man in black is on alert level here three on the green um, everybody's ready to go so let's go ahead and go so we got to decide who we want to to move into the first room and i think we'll go ahead since dr haskins has um armor we're going to have her go first so she's a little bit more protected and um speed wise are all the same so you'll see when we roll initiative um they're all going to be pretty much on equal ground there so we'll go ahead and she's got a melee weapon too. So we'll go ahead and start with her and we'll go ahead and move her into this room here. So we're going to move her into the room. And when she does that, it is, does count as an action. So I just put this die just as a remember that she's had one action spent. Um, then you draw your encounter card. So we're going to draw our encounter card and from the Roman numeral one, as you can see, there's Roman numerals on all these, uh, on this level. So we're going to draw just from the level one, 
and counter deck. And we have secret armory. The walls of this room are lined with primitive and modern weapons. You were in luck, except for the gray aliens who want them too. So after the encounter, each player may search for loot normally or go through the loot deck and take the first weapon card without the need to search and then reshuffle the loot deck after everyone is taken. That might not be a bad idea. So we're at green alert level, which one thing I had to do as soon as we draw the card, our man in black moves up on the alert track. And um, we're going to have we're three to four players. So two gray aliens are going to come out. And if we defeat them, um, oops, I'm moving this all over the place. We're going to get three experience points. All right. So let's draw from our alien deck. Uh, the other thing too is this I, um, uh, objective token is going to flip. So we'll flip the oh, supply cash. So that's cool. So we'll get two extra supply cards we get to draw and it's going to be Dr. Haskins gets to do that because she's the one that entered the room. So we're now we're going to do our combat. So let's draw the top two alien cards from our combat track over here. So here's our first two, and we've got two gray aliens. And as you can see on the cards, they've got different attacks and then different stats. So the main thing we need to look at, first of all, they're, this is number five and number six. They have four health, initiative nine and initiative four. That's pretty fast. And then three actions and three accuracy, and they both have that. And then they each have a different um, attacks and they're going to go progress through these during their activation. And these uh, blue die are alien tech weapon attacks and that's pretty powerful. So the num this one here, number six, is a, has a little bit more powerful uh, attacks. They also have ways of destroying, destroying armor and stuff like that. So let's get the board set up. So since this one's got the higher initiative, we'll put him at the top. We will grab uh, five and six from the aliens over here. Ooh, and boonk, boonk. So now we got the aliens in there. And so their tokens, um, again, their initiative is already uh, set. So we've got five and six. Of course, I did not grab the five and six token. Let's see here. Here's six and six is going to go on the four and five is going to go on the nine. So he's really fast. So now what we do for our initiative, our initiative is rolling this die and then uh, adding our speed, which we all have speed to. So let's see what we get. So Adam Starblaster gets five. Snippy gets six, seven, eight. It's a fast bovine. No. And our Dr. Haskin, she gets three, five. So at least these two are going to go before that one alien there. So the aliens only have four health, so their their health isn't great, but they are they are pretty tough. They've got some nasty weapons. So hopefully we can um, take them out after when we get our chance to go pretty quick here. All right, so alien number. Five is going to go first, so let's take a look at his card here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, little tracker here to keep track of their health. So let's take a look here. So we've got um, plasma pistol will be attack first. It's highest armor. So as you can see, each each target's going to be different as it goes down. So highest armor, lowest speed, highest health, and they will move or do whatever they got to do to be able to do that attack. Now the first attack is a plasma pistol, so it's ranged. So they don't have to uh, be in the same uh, square to make that attack, same room. So it's highest armor, which is going to be our doctor. So he's going to roll. He's got an accuracy of three. So let's see if he can get a three or lower. Hopefully not. Four. So he missed. So for a second action, it's going to move down to the probe. Uh oh, we're going to get probed. Not good. So that's the lowest speed. Well, they're all twos. I'm going to go ahead and keep it on Dr. Haskins because she's got the armor. Um, if they do get a crit, um, it, there's there's multiple uh, special actions on these characters. So there's the little armor symbol, red armor symbol. Actually, it's on this card. And then there's also the little red blast symbol. So 
if you get a critical that's how much armor damage so armor normally will just reduce your damage but if you if if i hit if i get hit by something with this symbol it actually starts to take away my armor cool thing is doc, dr haskin has an ability to repair armor and then you can also use duct tape to repair armor um and then the blast symbol is indicates target is stunned for one turn so they can't take any actions and then the radiation symbol means you take radiation damage and it ignores armor which is not good just like a psi attack so that's that so if he gets a crit with the probe then we're stunned and yeah i think i'd be stunned if i got probed too so let's see what we get here six so that's going to miss so that's two actions and then the third action is highest health highest health is snippy so he's going to have to move so if he moves that's his third action so he's done he doesn't get to make that attack and then his attack cycle will reset the next time he goes so now snippy gets to go and that's perfect because now snippy she only has a kick she doesn't have any weapons yet she doesn't have her harness so she can kick she also has a side blast so if she's able to do a decent amount of damage with the kick she could not move and do a side blast on the one in the room any adjacent rooms as long as there's a door adjacent to it you can attack into that other room with a ranged weapon so she's got a um, accuracy of two let's see what happens and she missed she'll try to kick him again and a crit that's awesome so she's going to get two white dice for her kick plus another one for the crit so she's got three so she could take him out right here and easily so that is fantastic so number five is gone so remove him now when you when he, as you take out an enemy you automatically get one experience for that so she's got one experience and we'll remove his uh, card Just slide him up so he's gone and next will be we'll go ahead and do well we'll go ahead and uh, with dr. Haskins she's got one only got one activation left because she used one so she'll go she'll use her giant wrench which is a white die for damage see if she can get a crit nope and she missed she needed a two so she's done now we're gonna move to Adam now Adam has the pistol uses a green die for damage uh, he has got an accuracy of four so he's got a really good chance of hitting and there you go so he's got a green die four damage Wow that was the best you can get on that die so he takes out that alien so he's gonna get an experience that alien is now defeated and remove the token reset the board here so they are down take him off and now um we move on so we've resolved combat so we're going to go ahead and receive our experience for it and again for this one we're in the green so we're going to get three experience that's everybody so everybody's going to get three so that's going to move four four and three and we've done the experience now we're going to search the room so everybody can move in there for free and we're all going to search the room now since the cash was in there and our doctor moved in there first she automatically gets to, or she gets two cards she gets to keep both so let's see what she got she got peanut butter so with that you can heal one health and disc to, and discard or give too blurry to have him stay with you for one or more game levels so that's an ally so if you get two of these you can get rid of these to to bring in an ally or uh, sometimes um, you'll encounter them in, in encounters and then you can give them this to, to have them come with you and they usually stay again for one more game level so they'll stay with this level and one more level um, and then if you get more of these peanut butters you can keep giving it to them and get them to stay with you and then we also got riot squad um, armor which is great because it's three armor and it's a medium armor so I'm gonna go ahead and put these here for now now everybody's gonna roll a search search is based on your uh, mental so we've got a two mental with Adam three with snippy and four with uh, Donna Haskins so we'll start with Adam and since we're playing a three-player game you get to um, in the rules you get they state that if you have three players you get to roll twice and then you get to keep one and discard the other if you get uh, two pieces of equipment so let's see what we get here 
nothing. Ooh, and one. So we did get one. Oh, great. He got a uh, conjoined sweater vest. So this is only usable by the Smith family. The Smith family is, um, well, in case you don't know anything about the game, and they're they're on the cover, I think, or in the book. But uh, let's see if I can find. There's their figure. It hasn't been painted yet, but this is the Smith family. So as you can see, they uh, they can wear the nice uh, conjoined conjoin sweater vest, so they all look nice. It's pretty cool, and it's two armor. It's a nice sweater vest. So, all right. So we'll keep that as just uh, for now. Now we're going to move on to Snippy. Now she just needs she he um, needs a three or better or under. Nope and nope. And then Dr. Haskins used a four or under, no. And yes, so one piece of equipment there. Oh, and perfect, duct tape. So that you can repair up to three armor with this after, and then you can uh, you discard it. Or you can also, there's also a way of crafting weapons. If you get the right card, if that comes up, we'll sh talk about it. But you can craft weapons um, using duct tape and multiple weapons and to make one, uh, a better you know version of that, of a weapon. So it's pretty neat. So. So right now, again, your strength determines how much you can carry. This isn't going to help us at all because we don't have the Smiths. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give, he can take medium armor because you can see that symbol match. So I'm going to give him the medium armor. Um, although, can he take light? Yeah, he can't even use light armor. So we'll keep it like that. Uh, the peanut butter. We'll just go ahead and give these to give that to Snippy and that to Snippy. Um, Dr. Haskins can actually repair armor. Uh, he says you can repair two armor for yourself or another player after every encounter. So she already has built in like the ability to repair armor, but we also have that duct tape, which we can use as well, which is pretty cool. So we're good. We have uh, all the items distributed. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a room clear token. So this just shows that that room's cleared and we can't search it again. And then we're going to, um, we did all our trading of equipment and all that kind of stuff. So we're ready to go into the next room. Now, one thing that Dr. Haskins has, she has the ability uh, once per game level to flip over one of the objective tokens. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to flip that and uh, let's see what... Um, we're going to have to, let's see what this one is. Okay, so it's another supply cache. All right. So we know one of those has to be the computer terminal, one has to be the portal, and then the other one we put a uh, another stasis chamber out there. So um, we can kind of ignore that supply cache, but uh, we have to kind of go through there regardless. As you can see, we have to go here to get to those two rooms. So we're still going to end up going in there, so that's fine. All right, so we're going to move into... We're going to go ahead and move into that room there, I think. And let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do Adam Star Blaster this time. Uh, well, no, we'll stay with Donna. So we're going to move her. So again, one action spent. We'll flip our encounter card and raise the alarm. A bit of a break. So... The cavern is made of pure crystal and hums oddly. You feel a general sense of well-being until you notice the bad guys. All players who enter a room heal two health at the end of the encounter only works once per player. And it's just going to be one gray alien and we only get one experience. So we'll pull a gray alien card here. Oops, and I just realized I played a game earlier and I forgot to shuffle the rest of these. So let me shuffle these real quick. So after you encounter them, I take the uh, cards and I put them at the bottom of their respective decks face up. And then when it comes back around, I shuffle them back up and start over again. Okay, so we have Great Alien number seven. So since we only have one, it's not imperative that we 
worry about the token so much. But and he's got an or actually seven and initiative seven, so he's pretty fast. Again, three uh, action point or three uh, mental or action points, and then three accuracy. Or excuse me, three speed and three accuracy. Okay, so let's see what our initiatives are. So Adam's gonna. Oh, and I forgot to flip the objective. Oh, it's the portal. Okay, so the portals are what you use to go to the next level. And um, and we'll talk more about that when it happens, but that's where you fight the, the boss for each level. But that won't happen because we haven't found the terminal yet. Once you find the terminal, that actually activates the portal, which allows you to use it. So as soon as we find the terminal, we'll activate it. And as soon as we enter that room, the boss will be there waiting for us. Okay, so let's see, Adam has a one, that's not good. It's gonna give him a three. Snippy, she gets a six, four plus two, and Donna gets five plus two, a seven. So that's good, because she's gonna go before the alien. And I forgot to get the alien token here. Let me get that. So here is our gray alien. Okay, so she is going to um, attack. She's got one action left and she's gonna use her nice big giant wrench. Again, her um, accuracy is a two and she misses. That's unfortunate. So now the alien's gonna go and this alien has uh, let's see what he's got here. So he's got probe. He's going to start with the probe, highest accuracy, move down to laser pistol, highest armor, and then another laser pistol, lowest armor. So let's start with the probe. Again, probes are never fun. And his highest accuracy, so that's Adam. So he's going to move into this room and attack Adam. So that's one action, but he's still going to do that act activation he's not going to drop down so he still does the probe he's got a three accuracy Ooh, that's a crit that's not good so he's going to roll two and the bad thing is it's going to stun so that's two damage and he's stunned but the good thing is he is um got that armor and it doesn't destroy it. So he's going to absorb all the damage, but he's stunned. So he's not going to be able to go this uh, turn. He's not going to be able to have this turn, which stinks. So we're going to skip him. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to the red side. There's a red side. So he know he's stunned and he can't go. So next is, that was, uh, he moved, he attacked. He's got one more attack, which is going to be his laser pistol. And that laser pistol attack is highest armor, which is going to be Adam again. So he'll roll. And this one will destroy armor if it hits. And it missed. Thank goodness. So he is done. Now we're going to go to Snip. Snippy's going to go ahead and do her kick twice. So see her first one. She needs a two or under. Nope. Second kick. Oh, that was, oh, it's still a hit, but that was on a one up there for a second. So that's two of the white dice. Two damage so not quite enough to take him out but he's down two points so we'll slide that down and it would be adam's turn but he's knocked out and stunned so he's now able to go again and we're going to go back up to the top and that's going to be dr donna haskins again now unfortunately she's in the other room so she's going to have to waste a movement to attack. So she's got to move. She's got one left. Let's see if she can hit. Yes. So she gets a hit. It's one white die. One damage. So he's still kicking. This guy's taking a beating. He's got one left and unfortunately he gets to go again. So we're going to start back over on the uh, track and it's going to be um, highest accuracy again, which is going to go to uh, with the probe. It's going to go to Adam. So we need three or less, oops, that's a miss. Then we're gonna go to the laser pistol, which is highest armor, which is Adam again. That's a hit, 
was uh, that stinks. Um, that's going to take a armor out, unfortunately. Fortunately, it's only one damage, but it's going to do, which is armor would absorb that damage, but it's also going to take a notch. Of, oops, I forgot to move his armor up. So his armor would have been on three. Now it's to two. Good thing is Dr. Haskins can repair it at the end of the encounter. So that was his second laser. So now his third laser pistol is the lowest armor, which would be Snippy. She has no armor at all. So he'll attack Snippy and he hits. And that's going to be the same thing. One of these plus if he had, she doesn't have, oh my goodness, four damage. She has no armor though. So that's going to take her down to eight. That was a nasty hit. Might have to use that uh, peanut butter. Okay. So that was his three actions. Now we're going to move to Snippy. Snippy's mad. Just got laser pistoled. And she's going to try kicking again twice. So here we go. That's a miss. And that's a hit. Awesome. So she gets her two white dice. And oh my goodness, she kicks him halfway across the room. So he is gone. No more alien. We'll reset these real quick. And he is gone. All right. So... Oops, hit the camera. So there's the alien. So again, Snippy's going to get an experience for that. And then everybody is going to get two ex or one experience as well for clearing the encounter. So Snippy's one away from jumping up to uh, the next level. So they're all going to come back in here. And again, if they enter, it says um, all players who enter the room heal two health at the end of the encounter. And it only works once per player. So that's going to give her two health back to 10. And again, since once you're out of the encounter and you're not moving into a new uh, room, the actions, your actions are basically are free and they're going to go back into that room and search and do all that kind of stuff. So... Um, and my assumption is they do enter the room. Yeah, so I'm, I, I think that I'm doing, hopefully I'm doing that right. If there's any, if I'm not, let me know. Um, but they all healed and now we're going to do our search. And again, that's the portal. There's no, there's no extra anything special about that right now. So Adam's going to go. No. And yes, so he gets one card. Ooh, flak jacket. So that's two armor. So I might go ahead. I don't, can she take? Yeah, she can take medium. So we're probably going to give that to her. So now we're going to go snippy. One. And two. So she gets two. She only gets to keep one of these. Now here's an oh, cowboy outfit. That's, that's cool. And you get plus one laughs. <laughs> So this card here is gives you um, the ability, because I'm looking on the wrong side, gives you the ability to craft weapons. So you can see you can now have the ability uh, to craft new and better weapons. See Appendix A in the manual for crafting options. But you have to have that symbol in your ability, and she's the only one that has the tech ability. So I'm going to go ahead and give that to her right now. But that, that allows her... And then the appendix, there's ways of doing that, but it requires duct tape and a variety of weapons to do it. Um, unfortunately, this isn't going to really help any of us, so I'm going to go ahead and... I could keep it for now. Let's see what else. Um, that was... Oh, wait, we got to get rid of one of them. So we're going to get rid of this one. We only get to keep one of those. And now, Donna, there's one. One. So she... Ooh, alien weapons. So now... This gives the character the ability to use alien class weapons when equipped. So I'm going to give that to him because he has that symbol. So now he's got this. So now he can use alien weapons, which is pretty, which I think he already has that ability. So actually, and she does too. He does, she doesn't. Maybe I'll give it to her. So now she can use uh, alien weapons. I don't know if there's a, 
alien harnessed weapon or not in there, but we'll find out. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I think I'll just keep the fatigues um, just to have them since you can hold up to two things. Oops, I don't know why that strength's there. She only can keep up to one thing. I'm sorry, strength's one. So I'll give it to him to hold on to just in case we need it. I don't think we will. She's going to take the flak jacket. Um, I think we're good. So everybody's got their equipment. We got that all sorted out. We're going to, I didn't, I got to put a search token in there or uh, room cleared. So we've, we've taken care of that. And now we got to go again. So we got to go into that center room regardless uh, to get to the other side. So we'll go ahead and, or we could backtrack, but I don't want to do that. We're going to go ahead and go in here. I'm going to go ahead and move um, her, Dr. Haskins, move the alert level up, draw a card, a time for a stiff drink. So there are several lizard men in this freezing room that are in a state of drunken hibernation. One of them wakes up from its stupor and challenges, challenges the player with the highest strength to a drinking contest. So Snippy is going to get in a drinking contest. Pass this strength check to maintain bodily control and the lizard men let you pass in peace. Skip the enemy encounter. Fail and you are stunned for one turn. All right. Come on, Snip. Boom. All right. So we skip that encounter. Uh, um, it just says skip the enemy encounter. I guess since we didn't, we skipped it, we're not going to get the experience, which stinks. But we'll move on. So they're going to, we'll move in here. And we can go ahead and do the search. So we'll get to search, I guess, but kind of stinks we didn't get any, uh, get some more experience that way. So we'll start with Adam. That's one card. Rolls again. And two. See what he gets. Ooh, a Tommy gun and another pistol. Well, we're definitely keeping that Tommy gun. We're going to get rid of the pistol. For now, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just move that out because he's definitely going to keep that Tommy gun. And Snippy, there's one card and two cards. Let's see what she got. Another cowboy outfit and fatigue. So we got two more armor. Um, I don't think we're going to need either one of these. I'm going to, well, I'll just keep them here. We'll get rid of the, actually we'll keep the cowboy outfit this time. It's no different than the fatigues other than the fact that she can hide, but that's okay. I'm going to keep the cowboy. Dr. Donna, there's one and none. So let's see what she got. Oh, the sacred boom box. So if you have a cassette tape, use this item once per encounter to automatically stun one of the lizard men for one turn because they love their metal. Unfortunately, um, I don't have the cassette tape yet, but I do want to keep this because this is a pretty good thing to have. So we're going to give that to Snip. Cowboy outfit. I think... Yeah, I can always discard it because she can hold up to four. So I'm going to let her have that. So she's got that as well. We'll discard this pistol. He's got the Tommy gun now. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll keep the pistol and we'll get rid of the rusty pipe. And we're ready to search another room. One quick thing I wanted to show you since we were talking about it. So in the appendix is this little chart. And this shows you how to weapon craft. So, for example, a makeshift staff is a rusty pipe uh, plus a rusty pipe and duct tape. So if I had two rusty pipes, which I could have kept that one, I can put them together and make a staff. Or a boomerang with a lizard man sword, rusty pipe, and duct tape. So you can make all these different kinds of weapons. And then you also have armor as well. If you get the armor crafting, then you can make uh, special armor. Salt armor plus repair kit plus duct tape and that kind of thing. So it's pretty neat. And that reminds me, at the end of that last encounter, I should have done it. I'm going to repair 
his armor using Donna's ability. So her, his armor is repaired. I don't know if I want to get rid of that peanut butter or not. I think we're going to wait. Snippy's still doing pretty good. So we'll keep the peanut butter. Okay, so now we're going to move into that room with the supply cache. Again, I'll move Donna. There's a gooey green puddle in the room. Alarm level goes up. We're almost into the yellow alert level. So right now it's still secure, but we're causing enough problems right now to where we're going to go into the yellow. Oh. Um. 